Hi, it's Kristen and it's time for another book haul. So there are like two parts to this book haul. Um, the first part is books and the second part is like bookish adjacent things. Um, so to start with the books, these first two books I got for work. Um, so I, as part of my job, run a book club once a week where I meet with service users on Zoom and I read a couple of chapters of a book to them. Um, so far we've been doing like young teen uh, middle grade books, children's classics, fairy tales, that kind of thing. Um, they really like books with adventure and action and maybe some magic. Um, fairy tale elements, that kind of thing. Um, and I've sort of <laughs> exhausted, or almost exhausted, uh, the selection of books that I already own <laughs> um, that they might enjoy. Um, and children's classics uh, on my mum's bookshelf that are still uh, not problematic. <laughs> Ones that have aged well have been read. Um, so I needed uh, to get some new books. I had a little look around and I went shopping with my mum for my birthday last month and we went into Waterstones and we wandered by the kids section um, and we saw a buy one get one half price table as Waterstones has a lot of um, and there were a couple of books that caught our eye, so we uh, bought them for book club. Um, so the first one is Wilder Than Midnight by Kerry Burnell. Um, so this sounds like it's a sort of fairy tale esque kind of book. Um, it says, Silverthorn is a kingdom of long-kept secrets, a castle of locked doors and hushed whispers, a village trapped between terrors, known and unknown, a forest of trees and tangled thorns, and something is in the air stirring up the leaves. Safi is a good girl, used to following the rules, yet curious to take the path unexplored. Aurelia is a defiant girl, locked in a tower but planning her escape. Wild Rose is a fierce girl, raised by wolves and determined to set her forest free. Together they will change life in Silverthorn forever. So initially what caught my eye was the cover. This cover is beautiful, such vibrant colours, I love it. Um, and the edges are purple. Um, and then I read the blurb and I thought that sounded really interesting. I'm all for uh, books about young girls deciding their own fate. Um, and I think the fairy tale esque elements um, will appeal to my service users and this edition actually signed which is quite cool um so i have that and then in that deal we also got ghost cloud by michael mann again this cover really uh drew our attention such bright colors again kids books just have the brightest, prettiest covers, honestly. There were so many books that the covers just drew our attention and then we went through like every book reading the blurb um, and reading the synopsis. Um, so this one says, catch the wind, find your freedom. Deep below the streets of London, 12 year old Luke is a captive, forced to shovel coal with other kidnapped children underneath a half bombed, blackened power station. Things feel hopeless until Luke discovers something incredible. He can see ghosts. Luke quickly befriends a ghost girl called Alma, who can ride clouds through the night sky and bend their shape to her will. And with Alma's help, Luke discovers he is in fact a rare being, half human and half something else. But then Luke learns the terrible truth of why children are being forced to work in the power station and he becomes even more desperate to escape. Uh, can Luke use the secret of what he really is to finally gain his freedom? This sounded great because it sounded fun and magical, but also like it will have um, some deeper meaning to it, which I think is always interesting. And uh, we were on the hunt because I've got um, like mixed gender. We've got men and women in the uh, book club so we wanted something 
that would potentially appeal to both wanted something with female characters and male characters um so yeah excited to have these for a book club um i think we're gonna really enjoy them then next up it was my birthday um a little while ago now uh, but a friend of mine bought me a book which was a risky choice <laughs> considering she's not seen my bookshelves in a long time, she doesn't know what's on my TBR. Um, so it was a, a bold move on her part <laughs> to buy me a book and hope it was mine I didn't already have. Um, but it wasn't, <laughs> which is great. So I have The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek. Um, this is about Angra Angraboda? I'm probably pronouncing that wrong um, but this is based on uh, Nordic mythology she I believe marries Loki uh, the trickster god and it's all about um, her discovering or recovering her powers and um, whether she, I think she is like prophetic, so whether she'll accept the fate that she's seen for herself. Um, I just thought it sounded interesting. My friend and I are both very into witchy books. I bought her a witch book for her birthday and she's bought me a witchy book for my birthday. <laughs> so that's obviously all we're gonna do, just buy each other witchy books back and forth. <laughs> Um, this one also feels lovely and is really floppy, which I enjoy. So thank you so much to my friend for that. Um, then my sister bought herself um, a new copy of Solitaire by Alice Oseman that matches her copies of um, This Winter and Nick and Charlie. So they're all matching. So she gave me her old copy. <laughs> of Solitaire. Um, this I think was Alice Oseman's debut novel. Um, it's got popular again since um, Heartstopper came out, um, since the gra graphic novel was really picked up and since the TV show, the Netflix series, came out um, because Nick and Charlie feature in this. It's about Charlie's older sister um, and there are moments with Nick and Charlie in um, which I think appeals to everyone. So this is about a teenage girl called Tori who struggles to like connect to people and then a new boy joins school and she has like a budding friendship, tentative friendship with him. Um, I have read this before and I didn't love it but I do feel like I want to give it a reread and see how I feel about it now. I found Tori quite difficult to connect to as a character, but since then I read the Heartstopper graphic novels and I really enjoy her in those, so I'm hoping when I come back to this um, I might have more of a connection or feel a different way about her. Um, but yeah, Solitaire by Alice Oseman. Uh, I now have my own copy of it. <laughs> And these last two books I bought in a charity shop. My sister and I went charity shop shopping. Um, and of course I had my eye on the book sections just to see what they had because I think you can always find um, some gems in a charity shop if you sort of look. Um, and I did. I found some that I was interested in at least. So first up in the charity shop I found the two pounds a hardback copy of The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Um, this one has just like hit every bestseller list. It's sold so many copies, it's done really well. Um, I think partly because um, it got a lot of hype to start with so then people were intrigued by that but also Richard Osman is a TV presenter uh, in the UK. Um, he does or did Pointless. Um, 
and he's quite well liked so when he came out with the book I think people were interested in that but this yeah is two pounds and as far as I can see is like apart from slight scuffing on the paper cover um it's in perfect condition um so this one I sort of bought for my whole family <laughs> um I'd seen it on sale on Amazon when I did my last haul and I was tempted to buy it for my dad for his birthday but something just put me off um that was four pound for a paperback so I'm glad I didn't because then seeing a perfect condition hardback for two pound in a charity shop was too good of a deal to pass up so I bought it so that I can read it and my dad can read it and my mum can read it um, and then we can talk about it. Uh, so the sequel's already out for this one and then I think the third one's coming out soon? Later this year? Maybe? Don't quote me on that, I don't know for sure. Um, but it's been really popular. I do enjoy a thriller. This one I believe is about for older people so it takes place in a retirement village and a murder happens and the residents, four of the residents, of the retirement village decide to solve the murder which sounds intriguing um i think it's been picked up for a movie or for a tv series um but i just think it sounds a little bit silly like it'll be fun like even if it's not brilliant it'll be an enjoyable read um yeah i'm excited to get to this and then lastly in the charity shop for £1.50 I saw Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. This again is in like pretty perfect condition. Um, I had been toying with the idea of buying this um, full price on Waterstones so I'm again glad I didn't <laughs> because uh, yeah £1.50 for a decent paperback. Um, this one I've heard mixed things about. I'd heard great things and that's why I then like added it to my wish list and then I started to hear very mixed things so that made me hesitate but I thought £1.50 even if I don't like it isn't too bad whereas if I bought it full price and then didn't like it would hurt me more. <laughs> Um, so this is about a couple who decide to go on holiday and they stay at this Airbnb uh, of this other couple, um, this older couple who then leave, although then a power outage in the city, like a city-wide power outage happens. So the older couple come back to their house and are like, we need to stay here too. Um, and it's their house, so the couple who are on holiday let them in. It says, What has happened back in New York? Is the holiday home a truly safe place for their families? And are they safe from one another? It sounds creepy. It sounds intriguing. I've heard good things. I've only heard bad things. But we will see. It's pretty short, so I'm thinking it shouldn't take me too long to read it. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I'm intrigued. I'm excited. And then lastly, we have the sort of bookish slash on theme, but not books. Um, well, some of these are books, but they're, they're not like fiction or non-fiction books that I would just sit down and read. Um, so first up, again, as a birthday present, my brother got me the Lord of the Rings extended editions of the trilogy. I've been wanting to watch the extended editions for ages and they don't have the extended editions on like any streaming services, they're all just the shorter versions. I love the Lord of the Rings movies, I think they're great, the aesthetics are great, the actors are great, the actors, some of them are aesthetically great. <laughs> um, yeah, I really want to, I haven't watched these in years and I really want to rewatch them um, and now I can set aside, you know, many, many hours 
and watch the original trilogy. I'm so excited. I don't know that I've ever watched the extended editions like all the way through. I've seen like the uh, cinema release editions, the shorter versions, and I've seen deleted scenes that are in the extended editions, but I don't know that I've seen them all like with those scenes in place where they are in the film in their entirety. Um, so I'm very excited about this. I think it was a great present from my brother. I think my sister may have mentioned it and suggested it to my brother. Um, but I'm very glad I have these now. Um, I cannot wait to watch. So it's, yeah, The Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers and Return of the King. And I'm excited to watch and see my faves. I love the whole fellowship. I love the characters. I love to look <laughs> at Legolas and Aragorn. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, just, just so excited to watch these. And then lastly, we have the, I'm gonna lift it and then I'm gonna put it down because it's heavy. We have the Dungeons and Dragons like original manual box set. This was expensive but was also on sale so it's normally on line most places for about a hundred pounds or even over a hundred pounds but I saw it for like 70. So it's an investment, <laughs> but worth it. Um, recently, my friends and I played our first game of D&D. &D. Um, I was the DM. It was um, sort of a birthday present to my friend. We'd been talking about D&D &D and how we wanted to play and we didn't know anyone who played or if we did, they were players, not um, DMs or GMs. Um, so I said as a birthday present to my friend I would learn how to <laughs> DM a game and uh, yeah DM a game for him and my other friend and my sister joined in so there were a few players um, and we had a great time. So this set includes the player's handbook, the monster manual and the dungeon master's guide. Um, which are all very helpful. They were very helpful during the game when we occasionally had to check things. Um, they were very helpful to me when I was creating the game. The artwork is like really cool, especially in the um, monster manual. It's got pictures of all the monsters it has, which is really cool. Um, and also really helpfully, I didn't realise it came with this in this style. It comes with a dungeon master screen which it said it did and I just assumed that that meant like the screen that you put around your game which is this which again stunning artwork that dragon looks incredible so you use this to like cordon off your notes so your players can't see but really helpfully on the side that the DM sees it's got like basic notes um, so it's got things like what you can do on an action in combat um, and think things about like jumping and movement, um, what it means to be like grappled or charmed um, or incapacitated, invisible, like all those sorts of things that characters can do um, in combat. Um, it's also got stuff about armor class and ability checks and travel pace and like pricing <laughs> even. It goes into so much detail but it's so useful having this in front of you so that when you're like in the middle of action or in the middle of a scene and you don't want to have to get out the manual to check um, you've got the basic notes right in front of you. Um, I found that very helpful. So that's like my nerdy-ish <laughs> addition to this book haul um, because yeah they're books so they belong in a book haul but they're yeah not exactly books I would sit down and read. Um, 
but yes that I splurged we really enjoyed our game so we're definitely gonna play again so I will have these on hand again for next time we play so that is everything for this book haul um, not too many books this time and then some bookish adjacent things I'm not gonna hold up everything because I cannot hold up all the books and the Dungeon and Dragons thing because uh, that would just be too heavy um, far too heavy shall we try it let's try it let's try it let's see if <laughs> I have muscles I said I wasn't going to do it and now I've just immediately changed my mind. I'm stacking them. I'm stacking them. I'm nervous <laughs> about this. Why did I do this? Let's put them all here. DVDs on top. Here we go. Oh my goodness. There we are. There we go. I did it. I did it. Um, so yeah, some DVDs I'm very excited about, a game, uh, addition to a game, a game helper that I'm very excited about, and several books that I am excited about. I'm just excited, guys, <laughs> just excited. Ooh, let's be done with that. That is everything. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye!